Okay. All right. So um, I guess why don't we go ahead and get started? Um, I'm not seeing uh, a lot of fluctuation in attendee numbers. So I'm going to just uh, introduce you, Jim, really quick. So um, our first speaker, um, again, my name is Timothy Ryan Mendenhall. I'm a metadata librarian at Columbia University in New York City and one of the co-chairs of the conference. I'm the Zoom host for the session. And uh, we will feature three talks during this session. We will start off with Jim Hahn, who's head of metadata research at Penn Libraries. And uh, he will give a talk entitled Integration of the Shared VDE Entity Editor in the Alma ILS. So Jim, please take it away. OK, thank you. Um, good to be here. Um, this is a, this is a favorite conference of mine, and I'm going to have to go through and rewatch a lot of the videos. So um, that'll be my to do next week. But I'm really excited to share um, what's happening with um, both our Alma ILS and um, what's uh, starting to be possible with uh, share and the share um, technologies. And I would say, like, um, just reflecting on this conference, it does seem like a lot of projects are maturing to the point where um, we used to just have Alma over here and various other tools. And now um, it seems like, you know, we're drawing a circle around these things and we're getting very close to everything more or less connecting, which is exciting for something called linked data. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is, uh, I don't know, I feel like this is uh, the right time to be into this uh, stuff. Um, so yeah, let me talk a little bit about the entity editor and Alma. So basically, um, ShareVDE, it is this um, federated like discovery system. It takes, um, it takes well, building on what, how Kelly just differentiated um, Bluecore as like, you know, it's, it's kind of like this single, uh, single description idea. Well, what ShareVDE is doing is it, it takes in um, a contributed um, mark from various uh, catalogs. And then um, it actually enriches that, uh, transforms it, and does some clustering so that it creates this discovery. Um, so um, there is a related component where there's an entity editor for share, and, and it's been named uh, jCricket. And so what it does is you can, you can actually create entities there, or you can edit already existing entities. So you might do things like uh, merger, merge, or... Um, or edit various things. So if you've played around with like Wikidata, you know, you kind of understand that that paradigm of functionality with like, you know, you have some entity description that you're either enriching, uh, creating, maybe maybe merging, maybe doing some, some other stuff with. Um, the, the two big functions that you can do with the jCricket API are either to like create a cluster, um, which would be like, this idea of the ShareVD opus, which is um, a parallel to the LRM work. Um, or you can, uh, you know, from creating that, you can also like um, export data. Like we could export, um, you know, a bit framework to Alma. Um, the ShareVD work is, um, it's it's inspired, I'll get into the models in a little bit, because that's a kind of a core uh, concern here, but like, um, the share VDE work is is really just a, a subclass of, of BF work, which I've I've um, indicated here. Um, and a little bit about Alma, like what I I really like what Alma uh, X Laberson, what their approach has been is um, there's an API approach to um, third party integration. So so like there's a RESTful API, and like that's kind of a universal construct for the web. And you know, our you know, basically what we're able to do is like it could be Synopia that sends BitFrame data into Alma, or it could be like um, in addition to Synopia, we could use Alma to edit already existing data, or we could use jCricket to edit already existing data in Alma. So, so really, um, this is this is kind of a core construct to know about um, the the REST API model. I mean. If you haven't seen this before, it's it's kind of like how a lot of web technology is going to work, and it's it's been you know standard for a while now. But basically, you know, bit, oh, sorry when we when we visit a web page, typically we're you know we see a web page that's for human consumption. But I, actually, you know, there's these um, as 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 we're all too aware of now, there's like 
these uh, systems on the web that are are meant for like robots, right? For um, either like you know, this is for a program to consume, basically. So you have um, some some client. I'll I'll just maybe to to illustrate this a little more concretely is like, you know, we might have um, our client um, being like an, an editor, like a linked data editor. So you can think of jQuery or Synopia, and using um, Alma's API, we can like um, uh, send in um, bib frame data, and like there'll be some response and um, there's like, uh, you know, various uh, various patterns that that could be used, and um, this is this is really um, sort of a common web technology that this kind of integration is is built on. So, uh, having said all that, I will like introduce a couple of desired things that we are thinking of um, being able to do to support um, some of our bib frame discovery ideas. Um, and I can talk more about those, but I will want to just focus on these flows for a second. Um, so using like our jQuery editor, maybe what we'll do is like add a bit framework to the Alma system. So in that way, it's, it could function similarly to Synopia. But also, um, if you think of like the LRM work, um, you know, a cataloger can take like an existing BF work and kind of put it into this work cluster. Or, you know, you could create that cluster. Um, um, you know, if, if a hub exists, like BitFrame hubs are, are like another thing. So you could think of these as very similar um, because that's, that's I, well, you know, you take different paths to get the Opus from ShareVDE, which is like the LRM work. There's a similar, uh, though different uh, sort of construction of the hub that has a similar function. And then, you know, what we want to do is have these appear in like our ShareVDE discovery. So everything that's in Alma, is um, you know we can we can um, make that available in linked data discovery basically. Um, so I do I, I, th I think it's important to know like that what what is the share VDE um, and I will say ontology, but I don't I don't mean anything very um, uh, academic about that. Well, all I mean to say is that there is like um, this um, way of like. Uh, our entities are organized in a way such that they build off uh, BibFrame. So ShareVDE is implementing BibFrame, and then because of its discovery concerns, it has some extra things like this ShareVDE Opus, um, and um, and also like just subclassing its its work because it's using this has expression relationship, and um, there's more more detail on it at this um, um, on this document here. Um, I'll drop this in the chat after I'm done here. But yeah, basically um, one really fortuitous thing that I see occurring is the Alma system has a very close adherence to the bib frame structure from Library of Congress. And that's by design. That's the, a design choice, which is an excellent an excellent design choice. And I feel like because ShareVDE at the base of the model is bib frame with these uh, new extensions for discovery purposes, they're, they're really close um, right now to, to interoperating uh, actually. So when we um, go ahead and do this, like exporting RDF to Alma, really what we need is here is like some middleware that does some business logic, acts as a normalization layer. And with that, we can either pull data from Alma that might be, if we have RDF data, pull it pull it into here, um, our ShareVD jQuery API, which is also called a Curate API. What we can do is if we have, um, if we want to create something like a uh, bit framework here, we can send it into Alma. Um, so those are those are two ways that this could work together, and then thus supporting sort of like um, improved discovery. Um, I mentioned this a little bit, but this is what's in the um, in this uh, repository is that you know we view the ShareVD Opus as being a parallel class to the IFLA LRM work, and um, you know consequently RDA work, but um, you know basically the set of the set of attributes that would make up the ShareVD Opus, those are paralleling what you'd find in the LRM work. Um, and so a work in the ShareVD system is like, it's at this abstraction that serves to collect uh, BF works. I think what I meant to write here is a an Opus. <laughs> so I, I gotta fix this. Um, so anyway, let's take a look at what this means for our discovery and, and I'll leave it, um, I'll leave you with this. Um, yeah, with this, this is kind of my concluding thoughts on this. Um, 
in our discovery system, um, what we are going to do is experiment with uh, improving our author disambiguation by using these um, opus, um, so these opus clusters, so that these these actually branch out to share VDE from our blacklight, but there's our author card. So you you know you're putting the author in context by um, giving a little bit more information. So some of this is wiki data being brought in, and that's you know that's been a standard thing for author cards for a while. But then these selected works down here, these um, selected works are coming from um, uh, the uh, ShareVDE uh, discovery API, it's actually Graph GraphQL APIs. And so what I'm working on is. Um, integrating this right now into um, Blacklight um, at, at Penn. And, and that's why uh, some of the jCricket work is, is really important because we want to immediately kind of be able to align the works that we bring into Alma into these um, Opus clusters. So some resources here, I'll just point out that I did, it's a little old now, but this comparison of like Alma and ShareVDE, um, things have been, uh, steadily like moving along now so like this is a little bit older but i think it's still like an oldie but a goodie and then this is a very related project is folio and jcricket integration that this was just presented uh very recently um so so you can see like um this is also like folio is a very like api driven project as well and it's using jcricket apis which are called like the curate apis and sure bd lingo um, okay. So yeah, those are right. some resources. I'll stop there. <laughs> yeah, Jim. Yeah, we're over time, but okay. thank you for thank you for a great talk and a lot of great uh, resources. So Meltem and Geish Lee, you can pull up your slides, and I'll give a quick introduction. Um, so uh, next, we will be joined by Meltem Geishli and Gustavo Gandela. Uh, who will talk a, uh, give a talk uh, entitled Assessing the Data Quality of Linked Open Data and Cultural Heritage Institutions. Um, Dr. Meltem Dishley is a research assistant in the Department of Information Ma Management at Hachatepe University in Turkey. I hope I got that name uh, sort of approximately correct. Uh, her uh, research interests include uh, collections as data, digital heritage, and linked data. And uh, I don't think, uh, Gustavo, you could maybe say a word or two about yourself. Well, I, I'm Gustavo Candela, and I work at the University of Alicante in Spain. I'm a lecturer in computer science, and I have been working for more than 10 years in a library, which is called Biblioteca Virtual Miguel de Cervantes. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction and uh, thank you very much for accepting our proposal. And hello everyone uh, attending. I'm Meltem Dishli, a research assistant at Hacettepe University in Turkey. And uh, today I'm going to talk about the important topic that uh, I worked on with Gustavo Candela, uh, assessing data quality of linked open data in cultural heritage institutions. Please feel free to reach out to us uh, if you would like to learn more about this topic. Uh, in this presentation, uh, first I will introduce this work, followed by an overview of uh, various methods used to assess quality in linked open data. Next, I will present our reproducible framework uh, along with the assessment results from our latest experiments and the conclusions. A list of references is also provided for those interested in exploring the topic further. Uh, this work is inspired by two key concepts. Uh, the first one is the lab concept in GLAM institutions, which encourages the publication of digital collections to promote their reuse in innovative and creative ways. And the second one is the collection says data concept, which supports the publication of digital collections designed for computational use. And high quality data have become essential in today's context, driven by AI and national language um, processing. Therefore, it's crucial to assess data quality to ensure accuracy, um, consistency, reliability, and reusability. Our approach aims to offer a reprodu reproducible and automated method for assessing the quality of linked open data repositories. 
Uh, many institutions have explored the benefits of using the semantic web to publish their catalogs as linked open data. Uh, notable examples include the National Libraries of Scotland, uh, the Netherlands, France, Luxembourg, Germany and Spain, as well as the British Library and Library of Congress and other institutions you can see in this slide. And previous works have addressed the assessment of linked open data using various methods and approaches. Uh, the first approach, bottom left of this slide, uh, establishes data quality criteria for assessing linked open data published by digital, digital libraries. Uh, it's employing a combination of manual and automated methods. Second approach utilizes uh, shape expressions which provide a method to describe not constraints that can be tested against an RDF dataset. Uh, however, the not constraints are manually generated in this work. And the third one is focuses on the automatic creation of uh, shape expressions by mining RDF data. Nevertheless, none of the previous initiatives provide a reproducible uh, approach using Jupyter Notebooks uh, to enable users to reproduce uh, their results. Mm, our proposed framework offers a, a reproducible method to assess linked open data quality, uh, and it works in three steps as you can see in this slide. First, uh, we analyzed and adapt data quality criteria from previous works to fit cultural heritage data. We ensured that all criteria uh, can, could be assessed using Sparkle endpoints. And the data modeling follows best uh, practices recommended by uh, World Wide Web Consortium, uh, enabling the reuse of existing vocabularies, such as the data quality vocabulary. Finally, uh, the assessment is conducted through Jupyter Notebooks, allowing uh, users to interact with a browser interface and to view the data quality assessment results and reach, run each of them. Uh, we will now explain each of these steps in more detail. Uh, to assess linked open data, we first need to define what we want to assess and how we will do so. Uh, previous works have defined data quality criteria classified by dimensions that can be reused and adapt to other contexts such as uh, cultural heritage. We modeled the data using existing vocabularies to ensure that the assessment is machine readable, reusable, and interoperable. Some of the vocabularies we used include the data catalog vocabulary, uh, data quality vocabulary, schema, uh, the vocabulary of interlinked data set, and Wikidata. And we use Jupyter Notebooks to assess the linked open data repositories because uh, Jupyter Notebooks have emerged as a powerful tool for uh, providing reproducible code and have been adapted by numerous relevant institutions, uh, including Library of Congress, uh, British Library and uh, National Library of Scotland. And a Jupyter Notebook combines uh, code and documentation. It's uh, making it a valuable pedagogical tool. And it's, it's user-friendly. You can simply run the code and update it to see the results without needing to install any software on your computers. And you only need a web browser as it runs in the cloud. What if you want to use and access our tool? Mm, simply visit, uh, you can visit our GitHub project and click on the binder link. After a short wait, about uh, one minute or maybe a little bit more or less, uh, the Jupyter environment will open in your browser. From there, you can select a notebook and run the code step by step. Once uh, you have run all the cells, uh, you will be able to see the interface where you can select a repository and you can select a, a data quality criterion to assess it in real time. Uh, 
the results will be displayed by the interface. In conclusion, uh, automatic and reproducible ways to assess uh, the quality of linked open data can greatly help the community. Uh, by providing reproducible code, we can promote digital skills and help users learn how to assess data quality effectively. And uh, this framework is also flexible and can be easily adapted for different linked open data repositories. Additionally, there is a potential for further development by adding more data quality criteria, which can uh, improve this uh, framework even more. Uh, this work can serve as an example for institutions that uh, want to assess their linked open data uh, repositories. And the assessment results can be useful as an additional documentation for other projects. Furthermore, uh, this work can be valuable in, in new contexts such as data spaces where uh, high quality data is essential for promoting reuse. Yeah, if you if you would learn, if you would like to learn more about this project, uh, please check out our GitHub repository. You can access our presentation on Sketch, uh, and the GitHub link is available there as well. After clicking the link, uh, you can run the code in the in Jupyter notebook di directly in the cloud uh, without need to install any software. And additionally, we have submitted an extension of this work to a journal for further dissemination. These are some references if you would like to learn more about this topic. And thank you very much for your time and attention. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, uh, please feel free to ask. Me and my co-author Gustavo Candela will be happy to provide further information. Thank you. Thank you so much, Meltem and Gustavo. Uh, another fascinating talk. And uh, uh, as we noted earlier in the chat, we are going to do Q and A at the end. But feel free to use the Zoom chat Q and A or the Slack um, channel for asking questions um, during the talks, and then we'll bring them all to discussion at the end. Um, our final lightning talk of the conference uh, will be uh, entitled Technology Adoption of Linked Data in Libraries, a Case Study in Taiwan, and will be presented by Weiyu Chung. Uh, my apologies uh, if I'm uh, for the pronunciation uh, errors I probably had in your name, uh, who is a doctoral researcher at the University of North Texas. Uh, Weiyu, uh, yes. uh, would you uh, uh, please uh, uh, turn on your video and share your slides? Sure. <clears throat> Um, great, that looks perfect. <laughs> okay, um, thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, today, I am going to talk about my proposed dissertation study focusing on um, linking data adoption in Taiwan libraries. How do I do the next page? Um, linking data is believed to be the necessary next step to make library resources uh, more accessible and more visible on the web. On the, web. Um, the application of linking data in libraries is not a new idea. However, the level of full adoption of linking data in libraries is still very low. Um, according to the OCLC, um, 2018 International Linking Data 
uh, adoption survey, only 75% of the 104 um, projects has um, linking data adoptions um, in production. So the majority of linking data initiative occurs in um, North American and in Europe. Um, the research on library use of linking data in Asia is very limited, particularly in Taiwan. There are very few um, studies focusing on linking data adoption. Therefore, um, my study is conducted to explore the current state of linking data adoption in Taiwan academic libraries. The purpose is to um, understand library professionals' perception and um, attitude toward linking data adoption. And uh, by having um, the UTAUT model as a framework, um, this study also uh, tried to identify what factors they might influence um, library professionals' um, intention to adopt uh, linking data and its technology. So this study um, is guided by um, um, four research questions. The first one is to what um, extent that library in Taiwan, academic library in Taiwan, would um, adopt linking data in their library operation. Uh, what are the perception and attitude of uh, library professionals toward uh, linking data and its um, technologies? Um, also, um, what factors that would influence their intention to use linking data? Um, and also, I want to um, investigate to what extent those factors would influence their intention to adopt linking data. <laughs> so, um, the application of a linking data in um, Taiwan libraries and or um, cultural uh, institutions has been discussed in several studies. Um, most of the studies focus on uh, linking data adoptions in museums and um, cultural uh, institution, not really in the libraries. Um, so um, Chan and Wendt in 2017 did a use case study of linking data um, in Taiwan Digital Archives Union Catalog. In another study, Chen also um, presented a uh, semantic um, data model to convert uh, archival materials in Taiwan Archive Information System to linking data. Um, there are two um, data conversion studies by um, Chant 2020 and Fu and K in 2021, describing the process of converting a uh, mark record to linking data. Um, however, um, even though um, the last two conversion studies shows a uh, very important um, in light of how linking data can improve the visibility um, and, accessibil and, and, and accessibility of library resources um, on the web. Um, um, a study by Yet and Child in 2021 shows that um, only 20% of um, 36 libraries in their studies um, adopted RDA and 78% of libraries um, do not um, adopt RDA. Uh, among those libraries, only um, 
75% of libraries do not have the plan to accept to adapt RDS and uh, linking data. So um, in my study, I, I try to uh, investigate um, in addition to the current state of uh, linking data and, uh, for example, RDA adoptions in um, academic library, uh, um, I would like to I also would like to understand why the reason uh, we have the very low or even to um, very minimum adoptions of linking data in Taiwan. So in my study, um, I use um, purposive sampling to recruit my study participants. My study participants are uh, library professionals in academic libraries where uh, those universities have uh, library and information science uh, programs. And also in the library, they have um, cataloging department. Uh, for data collection, um, I would use quantitative and qualitative data collection method to collect data from um, questionnaire. And so for data collected from, for quantitative data collected from um, the questionnaire, uh, those data will be analyzed by SPSS. And also for quanti quantitative data, uh, it will be uh, processed and analyzed using the thematic uh, content analysis. Um, so the questionnaire that I will use in my study will uh, consist two parts. Uh, the first one is the democratic profile of uh, participants, and uh, those information includes uh, their educational level, whether they have library science degree or not, and the year of working as a library professional, in uh, their current position and their job uh, responsibility. Um, also, um, it also asks uh, the experience, how um, much the experience they have with the linking data technology. Um, and then if they um, receive any um, trainings of training or uh, education about linking data. The second part of the questionnaire um, are questions um, designed to, to test uh, the UT, AUT construct. Um, so um, the four major construct in UT, AUT models are performance expect expectancy, efforts, expectancy, social influence, and facilitating conditions. Those factors uh, can contribute to their um, uh, attitude and int intention to use uh, linking data. So um, on the um, right-hand side of uh, my slide, you will sh see some of the sample questions from my questionnaire. So um, in conclusion, um, I think my study would have the potential to fill the research gap in linking data uh, studies. It can be used as a theoretical base for future studies. Um, the results, the outcomes of the studies can have the practical values of uh, strategy development for linking data adoption. Um, but most important that uh, the outcome of the study can have the uh, value uh, for curriculum, curriculum design preparing future library professionals to um, use linking data. Thank you. Well, thank you so much to our three uh, lightning talk presenters and uh, 
Now we can move into Q&A. So as Jessica has noted, please uh, drop your questions in the Zoom chats or Q&A uh, or into the Slack and Jessica will moderate. Yeah, while we're waiting on that, we did have one question earlier for Jim that um, Laura put into Slack. I didn't know if we wanted to uh, go through that one a little bit again. Um, uh, Laura asked um, about, okay, it looks like in his presentation that he's focusing on LRM RDA work as distinct from expression because that is lacking in BibFrame, but that introduces another entity that Alma is not set up for right now, but could be very interesting. Are you thinking to bypass Alma for the Opus works and how would you store them? Uh, Jim did answer in uh, chat, but would you like to um, talk a little bit more about that, Jim? Sure. Um... Well, yeah, I think it is it is the case that the Alma system is set up for Bib Framework and Bib Frame Instance right now. Um, so we would, you know, Share VDE is is does have a data store, so the hubs would exist or not. I'm sorry, the Opus would exist in the um, Share VDE data store um, when when we use our display. Um, for author cards though, we'd use the ShareVD API and the author cards would be um, sort of like a, um, uh, attached to um, our um, catalog. So um, no, they, yeah, I guess they're not, they're not stored in Alma quite yet. Um, I do think it would be interesting to see if hubs might serve a similar purpose. Um, I guess I'm, I'm curious about Perhaps maybe hubs in Alma, since hubs are part of the BibFrame, um, part of the BibFrame ontology, and hubs could also be in the ShareVDE system because ShareVDE includes everything that's in BibFrame. So, um, not to make it like more confusing than it needs to be, but I think there are there are some options here, <laughs> options to explore. I, I would have a question for Meltem and Gustavo. Uh, could you talk a bit about um, the uh, how, what specific, or and maybe not specific, but in general, like how, like what sorts of parameters are you using to measure data quality in linked data um, in the linked data, you know, uh, applications that you were kind of discussing? Um, uh, Shall I answer, Malcolm? Yes, of course. Okay. So, uh, well, uh, in order to define the data quality criteria, we have used previous work uh, regarding the uh, evaluation of uh, RDF data. So if you have a look to the references that we have in our presentation, you can identify uh, many previous works uh, in which you can see, for instance, uh, if the Sparkle endpoint is available, or what kind of the number of different properties that they use or the number of uh, different vocabularies that they use uh, when they describe their data. So the idea with this reproducible framework was to try to define a criteria which uh, could be assessed uh, only by using a Sparkle. So it would be everything automatic and not using the manual things. And this is the comparison that we have in our presentation with different approaches to assess link open data. So it's just like, uh, if I'm not wrong, like uh, 15 uh, criteria in which we assess uh, the number of, uh, for instance, properties, uh, vocabularies, if they provide the license using the machine readable property and uh, these kind of things. Okay, thank you very much. Um, be interesting to see um, like a project. Um, I know that they're they're still um, kind of there are different groups that are working on kind of creating profiles and uh, 
for bid frame um, in particular, and I mean, I guess for other standards like PsyDoc. Um, so it seems like it's kind of, there are some kind of emerging standards for what like a completeness or like a yes. min minimal viable product would be like for some linked data standards, but they're still kind of in development. So it'd be curious to see a part two of this project uh, when there's more kind of rubrics and, uh, you know, shape expressions and things like that are out there for some of the cultural heritage linked data standards. Um, okay, do we have any other questions coming in? Don't see any right now. Uh, I'm curious, way you are there. Have you um, you noted at the start of your uh, pr uh, talk that there isn't there hasn't been a lot of uh, assessment of linked data efforts in Asia, um, mm -hmm. and you you noted in particular Taiwan was um, did not have a lot. Um, are could are you aware though of any type of work along these? these lines that you're doing with Taiwan in other parts of Asia? Um, is there like sort of an emerging community of people trying to look at this or anything that you're aware of? Um, actually, I, I did my uh, research in uh, Asia, like Taiwan and China. And so from my um, preliminary research, and then I found that, um, especially in a Chinese cataloging environment, um, um the the mark systems the the major um you the major system that used to catalog materials and then uh i know that currently um they do a lot of copy cataloging of um English or foreign language materials uh, for Chinese cataloging, they still stick with uh, Chinese uh, mark cataloging uh, approach. Um, so um, they have got a lot of um, trainings about uh, linking data and um, for example, RDA, however, um, most library professionals feel like they do not have enough knowledge or uh, competency to handle uh, linking data cataloging um, in their practice. So I think that's part of a reason why they feel hesitate to proceed their um, um, way to, to incorporate linking data um, in cataloging. Um, so, but it has been several years, so um, that's why I want to continue my dissertation studies focusing on the current stage of uh, linking data adoption in uh, academic libraries. I can't wait to, to hear about uh, the results when you complete your study. It'll be interesting to hear more yeah, about that topic. Yeah, actually, I, I think there will be, um, it's a challenging because um, so far I don't really have a lot of um, literature to support my um, study. So um, I need to work on that, but thank you. Okay, hey, we have another minute or so here for a few more questions or you have any for our three presenters, three, four presenters, three presentations? Well, uh, I'd like to just thank our th our four presenters um, for closing out the conference with th three great talks on uh, three uh, very interesting topics, giving us a kind of global perspective, which is a great way to end the conference. Um, and uh, I'd like to thank Jessica Hayden from Beria College, who has co-moderated, done a great job co-moderating this session, as well as the uh, all of the volunteers um, 
throughout the conference who have uh, done all kinds of roles. Uh, we're going to talk more uh, in depth about all the volunteers at our closing session, and which will start in just a minute. Um, and I'd like to thank the co-chairs, uh, Jessica Davis and Mohammed Awal Al-Hassan, um, for all of their work in putting together the conference. So stick around here in this Zoom, and we'll have just uh, some closing thoughts coming right up.